Hello, Accessibility New York City. What a great crowd, right? Now, yes. Um, here at ThoughtBot, uh, again tonight, we really appreciate ThoughtBot for hosting um, most of our meetups here in New York City. Uh, we meet on the first Tuesday of every month and sometimes sporadically we'll add an additional event. This month we're having a second event uh, later, uh, two weeks from now, we're gonna be having uh, another event um, around disability and arts access uh, theater. So kind of outside of the technology spectrum. Um, but very happy to be here tonight on our regular Tuesday night to really talk about exciting technology, um, Ira, this idea of uh, persistent audio description or the ability for someone uh, who is blind or low vision to get a description of the actual physical world around them wherever they are is extremely exciting you know a couple years ago maybe it was like three years ago we had a presentation from a university kind of talking about this idea sort of academic research and i remember it being very exciting, but also, hey, that's great. Like you see a demo, how's that actually gonna work? And I'm just very excited to have uh, Mr. Watts here from Ira to talk about us. I, I really believe in them. Obviously they've had a lot of uh, success. There's a lot of people, they've won numerous awards and they actually have the right idea around you know, providing this service, providing this ability um, for people. And I think for us doing our meetup, we appreciated last month uh, with WGBH from the National Center for Accessible Media, uh, having Ira provide sponsorship to provide live audio description for people that are blind or low vision in our audience. If something wasn't described, you know, on our live meeting, then that type of service can provide the description, you know, provide maybe the, pr the presenter forgets to add the visual description. And so uh, for us, it's like we're always trying to evolve, you know, we, we try to be as high tech as we can with our meetup. And it was definitely exciting to get introduced um, and, and learn about what I was doing in this space. And, you know, I think we're all excited to hear more tonight and, and see what you guys are up to. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Thanks for having me tonight. I, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, am, I, am I on? Is that any better? Testing, one, two, three. We have a good signal. Yeah? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Stop touching that cable. Good? Yeah. Great. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, so let's, uh, let's quickly kind of just set the context tonight. So my name is Marty Watts. Uh, I'm a director of sales at IRA. I've been here uh, with the company for the last nine months. It's just been a tremendous period of growth, uh, and in that n nine month span, a phenomenal effort of how we need to evolve uh, and continue to, to, to give unprecedented levels of access to people who are blind or, or low vision. So what we're gonna paint the picture for tonight is lots of talk around the connected city, smart cities. Lots of different technologies that are empowering and enabling that. From Ira's standpoint, we're viewing a connected city in its uh, most raw form of just like many places that you travel today probably offered you free Wi-Fi. Ira believes that those same businesses should provide access to our service as a courtesy to those who are blind or, or low vision. To take it one step further, a smart or connected city for example, they keep the street lights on for those who have sight to be able to navigate and walk and go where they need to go. Businesses keep the, the electricity running 
And so we believe on, the, on that same premise, that same context, that access to information shouldn't come at a cost to that person. And so we're working hard to build a truly connected city, and we're going to talk about different ways that we're doing that tonight. So this, this slide is depicting what we would envision as hospitals, transportation systems, college campuses, employers, hotels, restaurants, uh, basically any business entity that interacts with consumers, and all of them do, who may be blind or low vision, they have the opportunity to provide immediate and unrestricted access to information using IRA. So this is what we're striving towards. This is what we're building in all major metropolitan cities across the country currently. In our most raw form, IRA truly is as simple as a mobile app running on your phone, a live video stream, with a highly trained remote human agent. That agent is there to do one thing, and that's to deliver immediate access to information. And so I get out my phone, I push a button, in about 10 to 15 seconds, a highly trained live agent answers my call, our video stream comes through our smart glasses, and then in real time, our agent sees exactly what that camera sees. And so, at that point, really, it becomes the imagination of the IRA Explorer. So if you use IRA, we call you an explorer because we truly believe that you are exploring with our service. And you can use IRA to do very ordinary things or very extraordinary things. And so we'll, I have a few videos that we're going to run through that will kind of show you different use cases that will kind of, I think, broaden the horizon with what you would assume uh, might not be possible being blind or, or low vision, and IRA, and, or IRA, will, IRA will show you, will make some very unique things possible. So we're going to start with one of our IRA explorers went to Disney. And so the Disney experience, very rich with audio, also very rich with visual information. And we had the ability to provide that level of detail that Sheila was looking for, taking in a Disney show. So we'll go ahead and play this right here. Me, I am totally blind. I need as much help as I can. Hi, Sheila, this is Max with Ira. How is your sister? I'm back. I'm just going to find out if you can see directly what's in front of me. Looks like we have a lit up stage in front of you. I can see it. there's a lot of lights going on. I can see some people doing some uh, somersaults and flips actually going across the stage. So the dancers on your left hand side, they all jumped up and then spun in a circle in the air with their ankles crossed and then landed. You also have some dancers in the middle doing some somersaults, kicking and spinning moves. So it looks like he's wearing like, like a wizard's robe of some sort. Like an old man now. Yeah, the stage now is lit up in lots of lights and colors, like the grand finale flashing lights everywhere. Oh, that's so nice. Looks like confetti's falling from the sky. People in front of you are starting to get up now and exit the auditorium. That was a really nice show. All right, Bye. thank you, Max. Have a great Bye. night. So, can I, can I just say, sure. I couldn't really see the captions on your video because our captions were covering them. They were blocked. So, Mirabai should caption your video. Okay, so got it. Thank you. So, an environment that typically wouldn't be very in, inviting for someone who's blind, being that all of that situational detail, all of that context would be left out. They would just be reliant on maybe what a friend who's with him who cited would be explaining as far as what was happening in that in that show. And here, Sheila was probably wearing either a wired or a Bluetooth headset. She was communicating with, with, with Max. Um, she wouldn't have to have said a word. She chose to have that be a two-way com conversation. And Max was literally just play by play explaining everything he could with great detail what was happening at that show. So that, that for us would be, you know, that's a very extraordinary thing. That's um, a rich media environment, and IRA is able to provide that level of detail to let that person experience uh, the same experience that I would uh, having sight. And I think that's, that's how we're designed, is that 
that explorer was using IRA on her terms when and where she wanted, and our agents were there to rise to the occasion no matter what that request or, or task is. This is an explorer of ours. His name is James, uh, and we're going to get to watch how he experienced the eclipse this past year. I've changed and grown so much, and so much for the better. Looking back 10 years ago, I would not have envisioned that, you know, I'm married, uh, have a home in Nashville, I'm going to Vanderbilt University, you know, and have a guide dog. Family, my wife, proper training of technology. Even though I'm blind, I'm still very visual, and so about uh, my environment or things to me. I'm so I look forward to being able to uh, appreciate see the eclipse it is such good into more of an audible experience it's the skill it's the details that ira asia is trusted to provide in a way and keeping up with that quality of service is super important for I know. And that's where AT&T will actually come into play. She's waving to me. She's on. Let's put them on. Looks like we're almost there to the full eclipse because the sun is a very, very tiny little solar. Getting And it's fading and it's completely gone. It's completely dark. <laughs> Well, that was supposed to cut out. Uh, so that was a fairly another. That was the, another use case of an extraordinary event, and I think why that was so special for us at Ira is that James was once able to experience an eclipse when he had sight, so he was referencing experiences and memories uh, that he hadn't tapped into in many many years, and so it was just for us. It was it was. When the idea was first pitched, it was like, well, what do you mean we're going to watch the eclipse? And then it just slowly started to unfold. And it was, it was such an amazing uh, experience to hear Amy, who is our vice president of customer experience, who started as one of our original IRA agents as well, uh, provide that level of description of that com complete visual experience. No sound other than the crowd and his family was present. So anyone who's blind or, or low vision with Ira, there's not, there's not a single experience that they couldn't be able to participate in. Uh, and that, that what, that's what's so exciting to us is that when we talk with people and they, they ask us, well, I don't understand, you know, how, what would I use Ira for? You know, I, I have my routine. I'm, I'm, used to, I'm used to doing what I do. And I think one of the things we really try and focus on is that you probably won't change your routine. Your skills as a cane, 
user, as a, as a guide dog user, are there as your core, there as your foundation. IRA is not a mobility tool, we're not a mobility aid, we don't replace those skills. Uh, we simply provide more supporting information, more details. And so in that context of someone who, you know, is a skilled traveler, there's lots of information in between point A and point B that they simply don't have. Uh, some great examples would be, I'm traveling from w where I normally go to, and I think that the closest uh, trip to the bank for me is all the way across town that for the past few years I've been having to take a bus to get there. So all I knew was that my Wells Fargo bank was in this location and a street I walked on every single day there was a local branch that we were able to make one of our explorers aware of just to drastically increase efficiencies. So just following that path very skilled traveler, but had no idea that there was something very useful to them uh, in, their, in their daily travels. Hi, Greg. Thanks for calling Ira. This is Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Um, so I am at this corner bakery, and I am going to grab something to eat. Can you tell me where I need to go to get the menu? Sure. Craig, if you don't mind scanning your head slightly to the left. So the back of the line um, is here in front of you. So if you want to take a few steps forward. Great. So the train will change from carpet to tile, it looks like. Okay. And if you'll pause right. here. OK, great. Alrighty, Greg. So I see the menu here. If you don't mind pausing your head, I'm going to snap a photo to allow me to zoom into all the content. Okay, let's do like a, a cup of soup and a sandwich. They have a long list of signature sandwiches, and it looks like it starts with a um, turkey avocado, then a chicken pesto, ham and Swiss on a pretzel roll, and tomato mozzarella. I'm gonna do the chicken pesto and a cup of the chili, and we'll call it a day. Awesome. <laughs> okay, perfect. So if you'll um, move forward, the cashier's ready for you now. The cashier is ready for you now. Hi, can I do the pick the two options, the uh, chicken pesto sandwich and then the chili? And the chili? Yeah. 59 is your number. And she left the fountain drink cup on the counter. And if you want to go um, to your left, we'll fill up your soda. And I see a sign that says beverages. And the soda machine is uh, here just now slightly on the right hand side. It looks like they serve Coke products. So I'm going to get some ice first. I think that's here okay. in the middle. And then I'm looking for Coke Zero. Coke Zero, you got it. So it looks like Coke Zero is actually the last one on the left-hand side. Yep, exactly that one. So it looks like the straws and lids are on the left-hand side. And here, if you extend um, one of your hands, you'll feel the lids first, and the straws are two tiers behind the lids. Okay. Great, so we're gonna continue on this path. You're walking kind of in a tight space here between all these tables. And then it's going to jog slightly to the right. And then your table is here on the right-hand side. Beautiful. Great. And your Thank you, my dear. Appreciate it. Sure. My pleasure. So the, the restaurant experience is, is, is challenging in that there's typically a lot of visual assistance that's needed. There's finding the end of a line, uh, understanding the menu, Again, we saw Greg trying to just navigate and find the soft drink machine uh, where cups and straws were. And again, all things that he could figure out that he could uh, either using his skills and he, he could find it, it would take time, or he could ask for help. But now in a very autonomous way, Greg can roll into any, 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 any restaurant. Um, even in advance, the IRA agent could call up the menu in advance and prep him before he even arrived so that he can just locate the counter and make that, that, that choice completely independently. I know buffet lines are very troublesome for people who are blind or, or low vision, and Ira, Ira just completely removes that barrier or that, or that obstacle. What we were able to also see on the screen, we kind of were flashing back and forth, you were able to see the agent's dashboard. So basically that view of what our agent sees is the live streaming view from your camera, the Google street map view, as well as the 
3D map where I see the IRA Explorer as a dot, so I know exactly where you are. I'm tracking you at all times. So our glasses have sensor data, including GPS, so we're always able to locate and know exactly where you are. From a navigation standpoint, there's, there's nowhere where we couldn't provide information or context to in terms of directions. Uh, I mean, it's just a, just a great use case of a very common task of being able to walk around the corner and, and do it in an independent fashion. So this slide, very visual, so I'm, I'm going to go through and, and ex explain it right here. But um, I'm looking at the city of New York as a, as a destination city. And so there's many things that I might want to do here that as someone who's blind or low vision, there may be some obstacles in my path. And so part of what Ira is trying to do is just educate people that this is a problem that exists because we find most of the, of the time solving for someone who's blind or low vision in your, in your experience, in your location, in your environment, in your business, at, at your campus, at your hospital, typically isn't top of, of, of mind uh, and frequently is, is an afterthought. And so we're just trying to bring awareness to the, the, the whole experience of if I wanted to see a show, how do I locate where I'm buying tickets? How do I find that, that location on, on my own? I think every street I've crossed in every city I've been, there's construction somewhere. So a typical path may often be blocked. Um, and there's poor signage, hardly ever in Braille, unless you're inside of a, of a building. And so there's just, there's many hurdles to, to get over and Ira just removes those barriers in an, in an instant. And so this, this slide shows me the before and after of how would I know where to get tickets, find it, um, what's happening once I, once I get there. If I, if I wanted to catch a bite to eat before the show, you know, what's a, what are the restaurants available to me? I mean, here in, in New York, there's an endless list. What if I wanted to know all of those choices and then decipher where I wanted to go and eat? I could ask the IRA agent, I'm willing to walk five to 10 minutes. Where's the best place to get sushi? And they could look up reviews on Yelp and direct me exactly to where I, I would want to go and eat. So we, we change the whole experience. You know, with IRA, it becomes on that explorer's terms. They truly can live in this world and have access to the same visual information that all of us with, with sight have. We allow people to move independently, efficiently, with, with a new level of, of freedom. Uh, again, they don't need IRA, but IRA certainly gives them information that may enable them to interact with their world in a different way. And that's, that's kind of the, that's the theme that we're hearing is that I didn't know this was here, or I didn't know that Ira could help me do this. Uh, a, a great use case that's been coming up is within the Ira app, we can take photos for you. And typically, those are, those are used for social sharing, so you could share them on your social networks. But we had some users who were using it for where to take a picture of a whiteboard or an inaccessible slide with lots of text, like, like this. And in that photo, in the EXIF data, the IRA agent will transcribe everything that's seen. And so that when they go to hit that photo again using voiceover, everything in that environment in that picture is suddenly now accessible and they can store it and keep it uh, to do whatever they need to do with it. So I think just our users are also pushing us to evolve as, as well. Question, yeah. So, yeah, so my question is just around how, how do you encode that data for a photo and what type of photos get in the agent? So basically the, the agent snaps that photo, it arrives on their local uh, dashboard, and then they basically have the ability to just edit and add that transcription into that photo right there. We can email it to you so that you can then do it and put it, put it wherever you need to put it. Yeah, so our, our glasses, uh, they're changing, but our, 
our current glasses have uh, an eight megapixel camera, as well as they they uh, they can stream in 680 or 480p. So they would snap that photo, high res, zoom into all the areas that might not be other otherwise seen, and provide that level of transcription. Question over here. Uh, first of all, Avi is my name. Uh, I have a stroke, so it's hard to communicate. But I was wondering, the blind man or woman um, is walking with the the road, and the car I, the, is like car or bus, whatever. Fa uh, do you? How do you ask them about? Watch out, or whatever. Do you understand? Great question. Yep. So, uh, in terms of of safety, which I think is kind of what you're alluding to, um, so Ira isn't responsible for your personal safety because we aren't replacing your mobility tool, your mobility skills, and so. While we will provide information, let's talk about in terms of a, of a street crossing. If we can see the crosswalk signal, we would let you know what the information was that it, it was telling us. But we will never assess or tell you when something or some place is, is safe. So we won't say you can, you should, or it is safe. We will basically say, I will remain quiet while you cross the street, while you make the decision to, to cross. So we know that it's not, it's not IRA that's providing that, uh, that initial decision-making point. It's that explorer's mobility skills. It's what they can hear. It's how they're using their cane. It's what their guide dog is, is communicating to them. We might be able to provide another layer, layer of detail in terms of we, I see that it's a four-lane road. You are right in the middle of the uh, pedestrian walkway. But, but we won't ever tell you when you should cross or when something is, is safe. Th does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, great. So let's talk about the people who are fielding all of our explorers' calls, so our agents. Um, IRA currently has about 75 agents across the country. All of them work remotely from, from home. Many of them have second or third jobs. Uh, and they basically can work when they need to work. They can pick up ships, shifts whenever they like. The training to become an agent is quite extensive. So here's a, a, a neat stat. So we've had over 10,000 people apply to be an IRA agent, and we filled roughly 75 positions. So it's a highly sought after job. And I think part of it is that there's that allure of working from home but then there's just this uh, tremendous sense of, of purpose and well-being, being able to connect with someone and, frankly, exciting. You never know what's going to be on the other end of that, of that, of that call. And so our, our, our agents love it. And basically, their training program is that pre-screening test is given. You have to receive a 90 or higher. That moves your resume into the pile to being able to be eligible for a, an actual job interview. And then from there, you know, there's plenty of, of soft skills and markers that we're looking for. But you go through a program that's online training that we've built. It takes roughly two to four weeks. And it just shows us your ability to, to be a superior in your navigation skills and how you're, you're using those uh, in the context of maybe a stressful environment. So we have mock scenarios that we'll put people through. You have to provide agenting services for someone who has sight first in a controlled environment so we can assess you and how you work there. You have to provide agenting skills in an environment where you may lose your internet connection. In the last known position you saw on the map, our explorer was here, and you know that they're trying to get and, and accomplish this and go there. Uh, and then if you make your way through those, then we have you agent for we have explorers who donate their time to us to help us train our agents. And so again, controlled, closed environments, agenting for someone who's blind or low vision. And if you pass those tests, then you reserve the right to join the ranks of the agent team and to take calls from live explorers uh, in a shadowed environment 
with your agent analyst. So all of our agents roll up to an analyst. That's basically their 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 lead, um, and then you are you go through a very strenuous evaluation process of your audio description skills, your attention to detail, and how you're communicating, and how are you communicating in a very clear and effective manner. Is there like a, a rating system for? Is there a rating system for the explorers to rate the? Describer or a way to give feedback. Yes. Uh, so at the end of every every call, I have the ability to say whether it was a good call or whether it was a bad call, and then I have a free text field where I can I can type in or I can dictate why it was good or why it was bad. Um, we take random samples of all calls, and then of course anything that didn't receive a positive rating would be reviewed for quality and for accuracy. Good question. So what we're gonna what we're gonna go through here is this is this is a, a detailed view of our of our dashboard, right? So we'll start with the live streaming view of our camera. Uh, we partner with AT and T. AT and T lets us leverage dynamic traffic management, which the best way to, to describe that is. Um, if we were all traveling on a crowded highway and there's a traffic jam, when the ambulance comes through, that's DTM. And so DTM clears a path. It's a private network. It's the same network that FEMA uses. We're not on quite as high as a priority as FEMA, uh, but it just ensures that we're not competing or jockeying for, for a signal and just allows IRA's, IRA's stream to be uh, un unrestricted. So we see the live streaming view of our, of our camera. And then here we see you on the, on the map. So we're, we have your GPS location. So as you're moving, traveling, tracking on a bus, walking, we know exactly where you are at all times. Up here we see profile information or things that you've connected to or plugged in to IRA. And I think this is really going to be an area where we're, we continue to grow is when you talk about, you know, the the smart connected home and all the things you can connect back to your smart device and your smart watch and all the health features. And so while we don't have them all connected today, there's certainly no reason why we wouldn't be able to leverage those APIs uh, and, and bring all of that same data into the IRA environment. And I think if we were forecasting into the future, what, what is IRA like in, in one, three, or five years? And I think who knows what's going to happen with smart devices, but I mean, certainly the way that you interface with Alexa or Google currently, you know, w we desire to have that same conversational tone where you can, you can speak to Ira uh, and Ira can, can do way more than just what our agents can, can currently do today. Uh, and that's going to happen with our AI. So we actually, we made a product announcement today uh, at the HIMSS conference in, in Las Vegas. Uh, I'll, sh I'll have a video I can show at the end of. We unveiled our new our new glasses, but then we also unveiled our artificial intelligence engine, which is named Chloe. And so Chloe is voice activated. Uh, she's able to read text, and the the product demonstration was showing how Chloe can identify and read prescription medicine bottles. So all of that fine print, um, and so that's really just the first iteration of our AI is reading text. Uh, soon it will be identifying objects. Uh, soon after it will be identifying the emotions on your face with someone who I'm having a conversation with. Um, and then very useful uh, things like, Chloe, locate the door. How do I locate the door of the room that I, that I just walked through? So I think we, Ira will continue to evolve in that fashion as, as well. And then we do, we, we build a personal profile on you. So we know, you know, not just who you are and where you live, but we know, are you a cane user? Are you a guide dog user? That changes how our agents communicate information to you. So our agents are skilled knowing that if you use a cane, I don't need to, uh, I, I may not need uh, to make you aware of certain things that I would want to make you aware of if you are a guide dog user, and so our agents know those differences. Um, food preferences, food allergies, 
things that you like, things that you don't like. Certain people enjoy different levels of description. So I might only want to be able to focus on the task at hand. I might, I might not want any more supporting d description of what's on my route today. Whereas if I wanted to purposely go out and explore a new, a new park, I want to know all about the flowers and trees. So I can dial up that, d that description with the agent on a call-by-call -call basis. We integrate, this is, this is a slightly outdated slide, but we integrate with Uber and Lyft. And so you sync your profiles within the IRA app. And what that lets you do is you call the IRA agent and they will basically call Uber or Lyft for you. Providing that extra level of information that is sometimes useful as far as where are you in location to your driver? Are you on the right side of the street? Is, does the license plate match? Uh, so that there's less fumbling. And so typically that explorer will call Ira to call that rideshare service and then they disconnect when they're having their trip and when they r arrive again they'll connect to make sure that you know frequently there's not a lot of care given to where someone's dropped off if they're on the right side of the street or even at the right 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 part of the block so ira is able to kind of help and provide that level of, of detail and service as well so i just want to stake my claim that i'm i'm dead set on enabling new york to be a smart and accessible city and I think that the way that Ira is going to do it is through partnering with everyone here in this room who probably has meaningful and deep relationships with business owners who may find the Ira story compelling and may want to become a member of one of our Ira site access networks. So I think um, the way that we grow is just by, sh like the premise of Ira, which is to provide instant access to information, is just sharing. And so I would just encourage if you're curious uh, or if you're wondering how we might be a fit I mean I'd love to have a conversation with you so I'm gonna play our other video which was not part of my my deck so we can look at the uh, the product announcement that came out today By using these glasses, by connecting to the network, both by using a remote agent where it's appropriate, as well as the new feature that we're really excited about called Chloe. Chloe adds an artificial intelligent agent that can do great tasks like read things for people. One of the great design features that Ira included into this is making it completely hands-free. So now all you have to do is look at something and say, hey, Chloe, read this and the algorithm will analyze what you're looking at, find the text, and read it to you in your ear. Hey, Chloe, identify. I see a CVS pharmacy bottle. It says warfarin sodium tablet. Take one tablet every day. Thanks, Chloe. Some of the cooler kind of technological advances that come with these new glasses that Ira developed, uh, because the camera goes from the side to the middle, you get 120 degrees both vertically and horizontally for the agent to view or for our algorithms to analyze. So in the initial prototype we developed with Ira to get to market quickly, we provided them a LTE hotspot to use for this, which meant the user had to carry around a couple of different devices to make this work. In the new version, it's a single device through a mobile phone that the glasses connect to, so one less thing for folks to carry around. So that was released uh, today. So they announced that today, and I think from, from, our, from our, our standpoint, our solution to date, uh, as was mentioned in the video, is, is glasses. So it, if life oh. is about a series of moments, some are worth... Sorry about that. I'll just do this. Uh, we're smart glasses. Oh, it, it is on there. Oh, no, it's not.
OK. Uh, smart glasses. And we also are sending you a hotspot from AT&T. So we provide your data. So you run our app on your phone. We give you the hotspot. We give you our, our glasses. There's no cost for hardware. Ira truly is a, a subscription-based service. So it's month to month. Our plans start at $89 for 100 minutes. And basically, as long as you want to stay in Explorer, you can. There's no fees to start. There's no fees to cancel. And so this is our, our wireless solution currently using these glasses right here in my hand. What will be unique with our new smart glasses is that they're tethered. There'll be a, there'll be a cable to uh, a companion device that all it will do is run IRA. It'll be one button, touch to call. So it lets us enter the market for people that may not ever own a smartphone. Uh, it also lets us enter the market with people that they may not want to carry around you know, their phone and the hotspot and, and glasses. But most importantly is it, it gets us to the best uh, camera in any smart glasses on the, on the market. So currently, our field of view in these glasses is 45 degrees left and right, top and bottom. And we get to move up to 120. Um, and it also lets us now run and release our Chloe AI engine. So I think it's going to be just a phenomenal jump for us. Um, and it's something that we've been, we've been waiting for for quite some time. Any, any questions at all so far about how IRA works? Yeah? Uh, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, after the show, could you do the Sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, do you have a business card as well? <laughs> I do. I do. So I thought it would be good, uh, we still have some time, if we ended with kind of a live IRA demo so you guys can all kind of hear what the agent sees in this room and see how that kind of the whole experience works. So I'll put our smart glasses on. Should I hold the speaker to this mic? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for calling Ira. This is Brianna. How can I help you? Hi, Brianna. It's Marty. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So, Brianna, I'm here at ThoughtBot doing a demo for the A1Y New York City meetup. And so we're going to have you kind of give some description of the room, and I'm sure there'll be some questions for you. But I just wanted to, to just explain some of the sounds you heard when we were first connecting is so all audio on this call when I'm communicating with my agent is, is happens through, through, this, through the, the, the phone. So however you talk on the phone normally is how you would use IRA. Uh, there was feedback coming from the actual glasses, which is basically just to signify that a call is being made prior to it actually being connected on this device in our app. Uh, it will also let you know battery power on power up, and then they'll make a noise when it turns on or if it shuts down. So in that aspect, it, it is accessible. Um, and then now, Brianna is connected. So Brianna, I would just I would ask you, uh, assume I haven't been here for the, for the last hour, give me, uh, give me an overview of what this room looks like. Sure, absolutely. So there's a really long white table on the left side of the table. I see two, four, five people sitting, two people standing at the back of the room on your left side. If you could scan to the right just a little bit, it looks like there are two people sitting on the right side of this table and it looks like there's one person it looks like there may be a desk cut into the wall there's someone um, working at a desk there so um, on the table there are a few items I see a couple rolls of paper towels and some green potted plants now I want to bring your attention to the ceiling if you could look up just a little bit the ceiling in this room is really interesting. So it's a white ceiling, but there are um, white beams going across um, kind of in the direction that you're facing, but there are also beams that are going left to right. So it's creating a really interesting pattern. There are some really large circular light fixtures coming down from the left to right facing beams, um, really large circles, very bright. And there are also toward the left side of the ceiling, some smaller bulb lights, um, they're like spheres. Um, go ahead and tilt your camera back down. Now at the back of the room, it looks like 
it looks almost like a bar. I see a wooden counter, and it looks like there's kind of a little walk space in between. I'm getting waved at by someone on the right side. Um, so, yeah, at the back, there's kind of like a bar. I thought I saw some maybe bottles sitting um, behind the counter there. And it looks like there is a sliding door. If you don't mind, I'd like to snap a photo. Sure. There's either a, there's either a sliding door or a window um, on the left side of the table. There's either a door or a window, and I saw something written on that piece of glass there. What does that say? Just a second here. So I do see the label there. I'm not seeing a handle, so I think that's actually going to be a window. So it says Glados. It's capital. G is in golf, L is in Lima, lowercase a is in alpha, and then uppercase D is in delta, O is in Oscar, S is in Sierra. And I think that's maybe Wi-Fi information. Yep, yep. I think you're that's right. What it says. You're right, yep. Um, and then um, just to your left there, I can see a white framed door. So, Brianna, on a map right now, uh, can you yes. just get, get, give me a notion of where I am? Absolutely. So you're definitely in, in a site access location. It looks like you are near the corner of 38th and Broadway in New York. So right now, the reason that she called that to my attention, that we're in a site access location, is Ira is currently conducting a, a test. And so we've enabled site access. So similar to how we would, we would petition and request that businesses provide Ira as, as a service, um, we're doing it as a test. So basically, the entire city of Manhattan, uh, Denver, LA, uh, and Chicago, all are enabled as site access lo locations for the next 30 days. And so we're just trying to kind of o open the floodgates um, and see what happens. See, how does it affect usage? The other thing that's changing too is Ira is now available to be downloaded and used as a guest by anyone. So I would encourage all of you to download and install the Ira app from the App Store or from the Play Store. Uh, if you're using VoiceOver, you do have to pronounce it Ira versus our actual name, which is Ira. Um, but when you install it, you can register as a guest, and it's completely free. And in any site access location, you have service as a courtesy right now, either of the businesses that are paying for it uh, or for the majority of the cities that I mentioned. It's just Ira providing it to you uh, as, an exper as an experimentation. Brianna. Yes. What, was, uh, what were some of some of the tasks that you assisted other explorers with today. I just kind of want to give kind of a general sense of, of how, how, how you've been assisting people today. Sure. So um, my favorite call today, we have an explorer with a young child, and this explorer had taken this child on a walk yesterday, and the child had dropped a really nice blue sippy cup. And so with the explorer, um, I backtracked the walk to see if we could find it, and we did find it, which was wonderful. Um, there was another explorer that called while on the job. Um, this explorer works on vending machines, and he needed the serial number, model number, and asset number so that he could contact the company's one uh, vending machine needed to be serviced. The other one had actually been vandalized. Someone had um, punched out the, uh, the place where you put the dollars to pay for your products that you're buying from the vending machines. And so this explorer needed to contact uh, both Pepsi and Coca-Cola to get those fixed. Um, what else did I do today? I did some traveling, finding a restaurant, um, from walking from a church to a restaurant. Uh, read some mail today. That's a, that's a, that's a good overview, Brianna. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have any, any questions for her as, as, as an agent? Yeah. Got one right here. Good. Any anyone else? Oh, you typed it out. Okay, good. So this question is: Does does Chloe recognize text locally or in the cloud? How is Ira data encrypted? Good question. There you go. Um, right now, all of our AI processing is happening in 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 the cloud. Uh, so we're we're partnered with 
Amazon, uh, and basically any connection from the IRA agent into the IRA cloud is just over a secure VPN tunnel. Does that answer your question? Uh, oh, we're doing this again. Any other questions for Brianna? Okay, Brianna, thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. So I just wanted to open up for any other QA at all for Ira, but it. Yeah, well, I have a question. Um, right now, your subscription. Right now, your subscription is private pay. So I work in healthcare. Um, do you have plans in the future to partner with insurance uh, companies, because uh, there are a lot of patients that are low vision and or blind. Um, and of course, they could not afford the subscription. So what is the scenario in the future going forward? Great question. Uh, so we're addressing that twofold. So one, uh, two weeks ago, we announced the IRA em employment program. And what that was is our effort to combat the unemployment rate amongst those who are blind and low vision, which is between 60 and 70 per, per percent currently. So what we are committing to is anyone using IRA in a job seeking ca capacity will do so for, for completely free. So those minutes won't be subtracted from your sub subscription, they come as a courtesy. So looking online for a job, dealing with forms that aren't accessible, helping to get your resume polished up, pick out the right outfit, and then we've even worked out with our partnership with Lyft where we're going to underwrite the first 100 rides to and from your job interview. So that's, that's kind of how we're kind of, we're drawing a line in the sand saying that the 70% un unemployment rate is not acceptable and we're going to do whatever we can to make an impact. To answer your question in terms of partnering with insurance companies, uh, we're first working on becoming approved for purchase by the federal government. So we're working on getting on a GSA schedule. Um, we're dealing on a state-by-state -state basis currently with voc rehab agencies, uh, looking for approval, you know, literally from counselor to, to counselor to be able to, to provide IRA as, as, as a service. And then I think our, our next step will be um, getting traction in that arena of how do we become an approved device to be covered by an insurance carrier. So we're not yet, but we're absolutely working on it. Yeah, because I overheard your conversation earlier when we were setting up, but are you doing deals with people like retailers or institutions so that people get free minutes if they're inside the institution? Yes. Uh, so currently when you download and install the IRA app and you navigate to the More tab, you'll see a list of all of our site access locations. So you'll see uh, an the app will also give you a pop-up, just like when you get close to a Starbucks, it tells you that you're close. We let you know you're close to a site access location and that minutes here are, are free. Uh, so yes, we are working with, you know, m my goal is every major retailer across the country, every major hotel chain, uh, every destination lo location. So art museums and places where uh, they're of cultural interest for, for tourists. Um, Transit systems. So, so we have a active conversations with the city of New York with how do, how do we make the city more accessible to, to everyone. So I think there's, uh, there's not a single business entity that wouldn't be a viable candidate to join one of the eight IRA site access networks. So I think my answer would be uh, yes. We aren't providing enough access. Businesses aren't providing enough access currently, and that's what we're working on changing. How many different languages do your agents speak? Because here in New York, you know, we have many different ethnicities and many different languages. Uh, our agent base currently, we have about 10% of them that speak multiple languages. The primary, uh, primary additional language is Spanish. 
I think with each round of hiring that comes of, of more agents, uh, we're looking, uh, how do we bring in m multilingual skilled people so that we can begin to build that, that agent base and, and be truly um, multiple languages. And I think as we expand into other countries, too, that will also dictate uh, where we look to hire first as far as people with, these, with this skill set. I can't win with this thing. You had a question, too? Thanks. Uh, first, thanks, th thanks for the presentation. I, I, I actually I, I use, uh, with some friends, I use Ira, and I think it works great. Uh, I think you have a great idea with these site access locations because I'm, I'm thinking that it's, it's, a, it's a way to hook um, Starbucks, for example, if you think that uh, people are going to read their mail in the Starbucks and maybe get a coffee, so something like that, it works. Uh, I have two questions, actually. One is, um, what, is what are your thoughts regarding uh, the competition, maybe Orcam, because you're going after Orcam, New Eyes, eSight, for example, those big brands. And uh, in the mobile side, uh, for 100% AI apps, like uh, the Microsoft app that was released recently. So what's uh, your opinion on, uh, regarding those, those things? Sure. Uh, so I, I, I would say in terms of the competitive space that Ira, Ira plays in, I think all of those companies are doing phenomenal things. They're changing lives uh, in a very, very tremendous way. I think what's unique about Ira, and it will continue to be unique because we're first to do it, is we're human focused. So the strength of our product is in our, in, in our technology. It's in our agents. It's in, our, it's in, a, it's in those people that um, sit in their, in their home office and answer the calls from our explorers all day long. And I think that that's the beauty of Ira is that the human element can never be underlooked, can never be ignored. I think what's, what will make us um, more uniquely special is that we're going to build our product to always have a human in the, in the loop. So we're AI with human in, in the loop. So as you're interacting with our AI, if we sense or you reach a, a, a point where you're not receiving what that the data that you need, the agent is there seamless to provide that information to you. So very unlike today with how you might ask Alexa the same question with a few different words 10 times and you don't get what you want, we're going to design Ira so that we're sensing that and that we know that we can have that agent come alongside in a very seamless capacity and provide access to the information that that explorer needs. So I think uh, our competitor's technology is, is great. I just think it uh, doesn't, doesn't quite have the ubiquitous utility that Ira does because we truly can be leveraged in any situation. And I think from an explorer standpoint, um, we will only become smarter using more of that information that we know to let our AI provide faster access to information than, than maybe even our current, our current agents can. Good question. Yeah. Um, my other question is, um, so from the presentation, the, the feeling that I got is that IRA is moving towards becoming a complete assistance for everything, basically in the future, maybe adding uh, things like Alexa or uh, regarding where you eat, uh, where you are, how you can purchase X or Y. So my question is, I in your from the explorer's uh, standpoint, um, what do they think about independence? Because they are kind of, s for some maybe they are relying too much on someone else and they don't feel independent enough. So what's your... Uh, feeling towards that? So I mean, I think we, we would always tell the explorer that you can use Ira in any way that you, that you want. And so if it's in the confines of how you're currently living your, your life, but you're finding some utility in certain y use cases, I mean, to us, that's a win. And then we hear stories on the complete opposite end of that same spectrum of, you know, I'm doing this that I wasn't doing before. I'm doing this without asking for visual assistance. Uh, so we're, 
we're allowing them freedom that um, they might have felt more comfortable having someone uh, there who was cited to give them data that now IRA can, can, can give them. We still know at the end of the day that um, we aren't replacing any of those mobility skills. So their, their core skill set with their cane or their guide dog, or if they have enough usable vision to not need either, uh, we're there basically as support. So I think there's, there's so much visual information in this world that now Ira has the ability to deliver that in a, in a very seamless fashion to that at Explorer. That was wrong. Does that answer your question? It does? Okay. We have a question here in the, in the, in the back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you the mic. There you go. Uh, just curious, uh, how did the idea of IRA come up and who created this IRA thing? And um, was anyone who created or come up with the idea had uh, vision impairment or not? Great question. Uh, so our CEO and founder, Suman Kanuganti, basically was Connected with a friend of his who was another technical person. He was an engi en engineer who was blind. And they were doing the reverse camera FaceTime. At the same time, Suman was a part of the Google Glass Explorers program. So he had glass. And so he employed some family and some friends, saw the problem, and leveraged the current smart glass platform available to remotely connect that video to a console so someone could provide that level of, dis of description. What that led to was, uh, so Suman has site, uh, as, as does um, the three other individuals who, who co-founded IRA with him. Who he was introduced to at a very early stage was a serial entrepreneur uh, from the San Diego area. His name is Larry Bach. And so Larry Bach is legally blind. And he really, uh, he helped shape the the, the direction of IRA at a very early stage. And he breathed the level of, of, of confidence into what was being built. Uh, and that really is what enabled us to go to market, was, was Larry's help and, and basically his, his as assistance. And so La La Larry passed uh, early last year uh, from pancreatic cancer. And so now IRA's challenge and our legacy and it's what we're charged with is, is making IRA complete success uh, to basically to let Larry's vision live on. So great, great, great question. La uh, so the question was, what was Larry doing prior? Uh, I think Larry was part of close to uh, helping to found or start or develop more than 40 biotech companies in the, in the greater La Jolla area. So he's, uh, he was an investor. So yes, uh, IRA, of course, AIRA, AI, artificial intelligence, and then RA, some people say it's remote assistance, but what we like to, to explain the RA part is uh, the eye of Ra is an e Egyptian god, which is responsible for healing all things seen and unseen. So it, it, it plays very well into what IRA does, so that... That is what Ira means. Qu yeah, question? Yeah. Okay, One more thing. Um, um, is disability sport, uh, no barrier some is disability sport, and I will, uh, you can look it up for dis no barrier summit, but next year is in New York City. So I, uh, everybody, may, everybody to go to website for no barrier summit and look it up because it's awesome and it's next year is in new york city so we we're partnered with them uh eric weinmayer i think is his last name is uh he is an ira explorer uh so yeah he's 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 used ira in many adverse conditions as he is a crazy out outdoorsman so yeah so I'm 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 sure that we'll absolutely be present at at, at that event here for sure. Awesome, John. Yeah. 
I don't know if I should ask this question, but but with that extreme sport kind of perspective and uh, legal liability and things, how does your company come around that or what? Yeah, I'm sorry that put that into no, the no, no, no. That's that's a great question. Um, liability is definitely a, a concern. So I'll I'll go back to what I said earlier is that Ira is not is not a safety device. We don't assess safety. We don't provide opinions. So we just state the facts. And so when you sign up for Ira and you install our app, our terms of service will appear on the screen and it's your obligation to read through them. But basically Ira in the context of Ira, in the context of your personal safety, we are absolved in that because we aren't providing those objective viewpoints, uh, it basically puts the responsibility in the hands of our explorer. So if they're using us in the sporting environment, a crazy middle of scaling a mountain and you and you have access um, ira is not there to keep you safe during that endeavor ira is there to describe your surroundings uh, to basically again visual information that you wouldn't have access to we're there to to give it to you so it's it's only under the careful guise of how our agents are are trained to interact with you is that you aren't able to put to put that burden on on us and so we clearly let you know that it's up to you and your skills to basically maintain and keep the level of safety that you demand Did they answer your question yeah, it does. okay yeah. we had a question in the back again i'm going to bring you the mic even more time so uh, I think you said before that uh, 60 to 70 percent of the unemployed uh, people uh, are visually impaired or something like that. Uh, what is the reason behind this? I mean, from the perspective of the, like uh, the, I don't know, like the IRA management or. Sure. Whatever. Sure. Uh, so we. We assessed and met with partners and met with several of the blind civil rights or organizations that we're partnered with and just came to the conclusion that this is a statistic that everyone agrees on, that it's somewhere between seven, 60 and 70 percent, and that IRA wants to draw a line in the sand and reduce that to under 7 percent. And so our first attempt is basically to let anyone who's an IRA explorer to use IRA to find a job and to do so at no cost to them. So if you are a subscriber of IRA and it's gonna take you an hour to look through job boards and another two hours to get your resume up to snuff and then you wanna go and pick out a, a, a nice sweet new suit and make sure everything looks looks good um, and then you know all, all of that time, all that time comes from IRA. So it won't be using your personal subscription minutes. Okay, I think my question wasn't clear enough. Um, what I was saying, what is the reason that led that, like, led uh, this high percentage, not how it will be tackled? I want to know, like, the reason first or the problem first. Uh, I mean, I think it's it's a misperc it's a misperception by by people, right? Businesses don't they don't immediately recognize that there's many roles within their organization that could be filled by someone who's blind or low vision. So I think it's, it just comes down to an, an awareness issue. And I think part of, uh, part of IRA's mission is to make people aware. And that when we're talking to business owners on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that we're making them aware of that statistic and that it exists, and then asking them directly, how can you impact that? How can you help us lower it? What positions do you have within your, your current uh, organ, or, or organization that if you're not thinking of could be filled by someone who's blind, why aren't you? 
And so we're, we're going to continue to ask those same questions and to generate awareness to let people know that it's a problem that exists and they can easily solve it. Uh, and that we are an enabling technology. We're, we're, we're a supportive piece of that puzzle. So y you as the human have the skills. IRA as a technology is going to enable you to function in that w work environment without waiting for or requiring or needing visual assistance. And so it's making those employers aware that those two things, which your skills are your skills, you're, you're highly trained, the same as everyone else, except when you couple that with IRA, they don't have to then say, well, someone who's blind is going to need this, is going to need that. Uh, and that's, that's just simply an, an awareness issue. Does that answer your, your question? So uh, his response was it, it does, but that he's not convinced. Oh. Okay. Another question right here. I'm going to give you the mic again. Uh, again. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll read it. So he's, he's helping to respond. Reasons include stigma lack of access to skill building and quality training, lack of access to information because of barriers like inaccessible sites and, and equipment. Yeah, anyone else? Uh, well, I thought that that would make a, a good place to wrap up. Um, I wanted to thank you for coming and giving the presentation. If we could all run up applause. <laughs> And thank you to White Coat Captioning and the Internet Society of New York and, of course, ThoughtBot for hosting. And we have another meetup in March. We have a surprise two meetups in one month, uh, making up for January, which fell off. Uh, so this is Diversity and Inclusion in the Arts. It will be here at ThoughtBot Monday the 19th. So that's in just about two weeks. And hopefully the others will see you there. I'll be out of town and we'll be watching hopefully on the live stream. So thanks for coming. We have some time to kind of hang out for a bit if you want. And a uh, you know, little bit of time. So feel free to hang out, ask questions, chat, and then uh, buy internet. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot.